Chapter 15 I am the bread of life. John 6, 35 When Jesus said, I am the bread of life, his audience had two significant events on their mind. The first event was the miraculous sign which we call the feeding of the 5,000. This had just occurred and is recorded in the beginning of the sixth chapter. We studied this miraculous sign under the title, God's Bountiful Provision. This miraculous sign had reminded some people of the stories they had heard about another event. Manna, a special form of bread, was miraculously provided in the wilderness, Exodus 16. In fact, some people thought that it would be wonderful to see the miraculous provision of manna recreated by Jesus. Just think of it, a generous supply of free bread every day. What an economic benefit that would be. So they had bread on their minds. Jesus took advantage of their interest in the miraculous provision of bread to teach them some lessons about himself. Course of this bread, verses 30 to 32. He comes down from heaven. Immediately after the feeding of the 5,000 took place, the people who had eaten the loaves and the fish were satisfied. It was like a holiday dinner. They had eaten plenty and they were filled. But as often happens, the same people who say that they will never be able to eat another bite get hungry again in ju just a little while later. The people who had seen Jesus feed the 5,000 wanted to see him do another sign. Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Verse 31. The people who said that this were most likely quoting from Psalm 78:24. In that psalm, you need to go back to verse 21 to find who the he refers to. It refers to the Lord, the I am. Jesus was quick to clarify who the he referred to. I tell you the truth, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. Verse 32. The people may not have remembered the source of this bread, it was not given to them by Moses. It was given to them by the great I am, who Jesus called my father. Jesus was making at least four major claims in this verse. First, he was claiming that the Lord gave the people of Israel the manna, not Moses. Second, he was claiming that the Lord was his father. Third, he was claiming that he was the true bread. Finally, he was claiming that he came down from heaven, just like manna did. Consider the quality of this bread, verses 33 to 35. He satisfies spiritual hunger and thirst forever. Jesus spoke of this true bread as if it were a person. He said, for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world, verse 33. This statement is packed with meaning. This bread is a person who belongs to God, came down from heaven, and gives life to the world. Jesus is making all of these statements about himself. As the Son of God, Jesus belongs to God. As the Son of God, Jesus came down to earth from heaven. And as the Son of God, Jesus is going to die on the cross in order to give life to the world. When the people heard Jesus' claim, they asked for this bread. Sir, they said, from now on give us this bread. Verse 34. Although they did not fully understand what Jesus had claimed, they said that they were interested in what he was offering. That is, when Jesus declared, I am the bread of life, do you want to live life to the maximum? Accept Jesus into your life. He is the true bread that came from heaven. He is the true bread that gave his life for the world. Eating regular bread has its limitations. It doesn't satisfy your hunger very long. Jesus made some amazing promises to those who are willing to come to him. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Verse 35. Earthly bread cannot satisfy our physical hunger for very long, but Jesus, the bread of heaven, can satisfy our spiritual hunger forever. Earthly bread creates physical thirst, but Jesus, the bread of heaven, will satisfy our spiritual thirst forever. Consider the origin of this bread. He is the Son of God. Very soon after Jesus made these claims, the Jewish leaders began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. 
verse 41. They thought that they knew where Jesus had come from. They thought that Jesus was the the son of Joseph, but he was not. That was not his real origin. Joseph and Mary were betrothed, but they had not come together before Jesus was born. Jesus was born of a virgin. The Jewish leaders thought they knew Jesus' father and mother. They may have known about Joseph and Mary, but they did not know them very well. Even more importantly, they thought they knew God, Jesus' real father, but they were mistaken. The Jewish leaders thought that they could trap Jesus with this question. How can he now say, I come down from heaven? Verse 42. But they didn't trap Jesus. Their question simply revealed their ignorance. Jesus had come down from heaven. Consider the benefit of this bread. He can give you eternal life. Jesus repeated his original claim. He said, I am the bread of life, verse 48. This time he referred to the comparison that the people had made at the beginning of this conversation. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which a man may eat and not die. Verses 49 and 50. Eating regular bread has limitations. It cannot make you live forever. Jesus reminded these people that their ancestors had eaten manna, but some died in the wilderness because of their rebellion against God. Jesus claimed that he is a special kind of bread that can prevent people from dying. Jesus expanded his declaration. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Verse 51, the people must have wondered, what is this living bread? Jesus went on to say that this bread was his own flesh. Jesus stated that he was going to give his flesh for the life of the world. That is exactly what he did when his body was beaten. That is exactly what he did when he hung upon that cross. He gave his life so the rest of the world could have life. What an amazing sacrifice Jesus made. Consider the requirement of this bread. You need to believe. The Jewish leaders were not impressed by Jesus' words. They argued among themselves, How can this man give his flesh to eat? Verse 52. The leaders knew that Jesus was speaking symbolically. They just did not like what Jesus was saying, so they made fun of what Jesus said by mocking the literal meaning. Jesus continued what he was saying. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. He was not talking about cannibalism. He was talking about what would become the Lord's Supper, which is a symbol of our spiritual communion with God. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Verse 54. Then he continued to say, My flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Verse 55. Something spiritual is real, even though it is not physical. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Verse 56. What does it mean to eat and drink Jesus' body and blood? It means you have to believe in Jesus. It means to receive him into your life. Have you done that? You could do that right now. What did Jesus claim? Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He satisfies our spiritual hunger.